So this is uh, the Developing Family Center is the third birth center that I've been involved in. First one on 92nd Street in Carnegie Hill in Manhattan. Um, we did not attract low-income people. We went to the South Bronx and we learned a lot in the South Bronx. It's not only that we could improve outcomes, but that we could um, strengthen the families. And there's a film called Hope Reborn, Empowering Families in the South Bronx. So when I got the MacArthur, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to come to the place that had the worst of the worst outcomes in the country, our own nation's capital. And that's what we did. I want to emphasize community involvement by telling you a couple of anecdotes. One anecdote is, relates to the woman who ran the, the uh, Tenant and Civic Association in the housing project behind us. I, went, I spent a lot of time networking between 94 and 2000 when we opened the, the center. And when I went back to see her after we'd been open for a couple of years, and she was in bed, she had metastatic breast cancer. Her, she traveled under the name of Miss Patsy. Her name was Veronica Hartsfield, but Miss Patsy is a term of respect in the, in the African-American community, and the community in which we were putting this center was, was, was fully African-American at the time. And, and people, families that I described as being the descendants of the original slaves. They had uh, a culture that uh, did not permit abortion, did not permit adoption, and did not condone homosexuality. Of course, people did it, but that, that was their, their culture. When I went back to see Miss Patsy, I said, Miss Patsy, this is like in 2002. I said, we haven't had any graffiti and we haven't had any break-ins. And she looked at me and said, I told them, leave it alone. It's our center. And that, to me, felt like success. And I hope it feels like success to you, too. You have uh, available to you a brochure, which was done after Secretary Sebelius visited us. <clears throat> and on the back, there are uh, descriptive data. I want to emphasize their descriptive. And uh, there, there are copies of this out on the desk if you don't have it. But I use the 2006 data because that was the last year we had totally black population. Then others began to come in to use the birth center. The word got around. But in that year, our African-American population versus the DC African-American population, we reduced preterm birth by 2 thirds low birth weight by three quarters, and cesarean section by two thirds as well. I used proxies to determine what that was saving the system. And the system, in my estimation, saved, we saved the system, $1,635,000. And that was more than our operating budget in that year. And those savings came on 153 births. And I've been trying ever since to convince policymakers, if this is what can happen on 153 births, what can happen on the almost 2 million, or sometimes a little over 2 million, that low-income people suffer in this country. So, uh, but, it, but it's hard to make an inroad on that. And uh, as I mentioned in a, a meeting we had this morning, I'm looked on as an irreverent person. We've had... Uh, I did a dissertation called Barriers and Conflict in Maternity Care Innovation, which is Teachers College uh, 2009. It's a, it's a political anthropological analysis of barriers to innovating in the healthcare delivery system. And it's, it's um, well, I won't explain all it is. I think you probably can figure that out, uh, where, where the uh, problems are for nurse midwives. And there are a number. Three things recently have happened that have been good. In 2006, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists um, accepted or put its imprimatur on birth, freestanding birth centers as settings that were safe for maternity care if they were licensed and accredited. 
And of course, we don't take people who really need the hospital. But in the, in the birth center out in Ward 5, if a mother needs the hospital, the same midwives who've given her her prenatal care go with her to the hospital. We do not send women off to strangers. Another thing that's happened in, in uh, 2011, there was a joint statement between the American College of Nurse Midwives and the uh, ACOG about joint practice. And that's, that's really a, another big movement forward. Then in 2012, the, um, the Strong Start initiative was launched from the Developing Family Center by uh, Secretary Sebelius. And when you pick up this brochure, you will see her picture inside and also all the other important people inside who, who came to that launching. After that launching, the American Association of Birth Centers applied for a grant and they were given $5 million plus dollars to, to help 47 birth centers in 22 states to reach out to low-income families because in a study that was done of uh, the data collection on birth centers that was also reported uh, that year, only 5.5% of the women utilizing birth centers were African-American in, uh, in their backgrounds. So what we're trying to do is get more birth center services to folks who are considered to be low income. And then in, in this past year, uh, in January, the um, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Commission for a Building a Healthier America came out with three recommendations. And the first recommendation was that all low-income children have early childhood development education. We have been providing that for 14 years to children from six weeks of age to three years of age. They, they also um, mandated that you look at the um, non-medical side of what people need, you know, the social, the emotional, and so forth and so on, which also we have been doing. And they mandated that, that uh, care of low-income people should happen in the low-income people's neighborhood. And that certainly is what we have done. I just want to say one other thing. When I came down here, I brought the, a film from the Bronx, the film called Hope Reborn, Empowering Families in the South Bronx. And I went into, I networked for those six years before we opened, and then we were given this building that you saw uh, by a, a local businessman, John Heckinger Sr. And uh, we raised the money, 2.15 million to renovate it. Um, but now let's see, there was something else I was gonna say about that. What was that, Father? What was I gonna say? <laughs> we wanna make sure that uh... We want to make sure there are questions for you to answer. Uh, okay. So if you, if you want to. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll just uh, stop now and ask you if you have any questions. Afaf okay. <laughs> is really after me all the time. She's my, she's my dean, you know. <laughs> and I have to thank her for bringing together the, the graduates of the diploma school with the graduates of the, of the uh, degreed programs too. So, yes. Lucinda Main Pharmacy. I guess I would ask you um, how you think about your center potentially as a training location for um, for students. We we have students who come uh, who who make the arrangements to come themselves, but we have no academic connection at this point, and that's not uh, that's not because we didn't try, but we did try. But as I mentioned, I've been considered to be irreverent, and we've we've had. Um, a lot of good things happen to us, and, but the uh, opposition that we've had has been monumental for, for 40 years. And I cited things that made it look like things were better, but they're not all better. And there are many birth centers. There are now uh, almost 300 birth centers operating around the country, and most all of them have had trouble either getting backup or getting licensed or getting 
we have an accreditation program. We're, we're not trying, we're not cowgirls for heaven's sake. You know, we're trying to do the best thing we can for the people who need it the most. So. Any other questions? Yes. Ruth, would you just talk a little bit about the process of building community because that's really what we've been talking about in the workshop and, and some of what you think are the lessons learned for all of us to take into building that community trust and building community. Thank you, Dr. Hinton Walker. <laughs> okay, I, I know I have a lot more to say, but um, I'm not gonna take the time to do it right now, but feel free to come to me with any questions you might have. And there are many people interested in the word we used to use. This is what I wanted to mention before, which was replication. And now it's, it's spreading and scaling. So I have to rearrange my vocabulary for that. <laughs> I'm not going to rearrange the people. <laughs> Wait a minute. Could you could you give some advice on the uh, on uh, community engagement and community involvement? What would be your advice to other people who might want to be doing things? Like that? I think you need to take the time to do it, and when you do it, take someone, make a friend in the community, and take that person with you. Like in D.C. Almost all the governmental offices are run by African Americans. So I always went with an African American with me. And I would walk in and I would say, now I know I'm the wrong color and I'm from the wrong place, New York. Everybody knows New Yorkers are crazy. <laughs> and then, but I wanted them to look at this film that I had. And once they looked at that film and heard the people from the Bronx, telling what the care meant to them, how it empowered them, then race would be off the table, my motives would be off the table, because why do white people go into black neighborhoods? Mostly it's for population control. And so we're not there for that reason. We're for strengthening families. Thank you, Fafa, for that. Okay, I, I have one question for you, Dr. Lubeck. Um, one of the advantages of having a center like that in Washington is that you are also hiring people, you are giving employment to people from, from the neighborhood. So it's not only the people you are serving. So could you talk a little bit about that, how, how the people themselves are serving each other? Yeah, we, we, have, um, we have a doula program and the doulas are very often uh, <clears throat> women who've given birth in the center. We have a breastfeeding peer counselor program where the, the uh, counselors will go out in the middle of the night if a woman is having trouble getting the baby latched on. And uh, they're, they're dedicated to the people in the neighborhood because it's their neighborhood, it's their home. And uh, so we're, we're very uh, careful about that. A last story I'll tell you was that when the tobacco money came available, uh, we were asked to partner with another organization, another not-for-profit, which gave away food and gave away clothing big time. And the boards were talking back and forth because we were supposed to collaborate and we would get the money to expand the space and so forth. And uh, the boards were talking and the staffs were talking and it looked like it was really going to happen. And one day I said to the, to the director of the other organization, I said, you know, we haven't asked the women. And he said, well, that's right, Ruth, we haven't. I'll get a van, we'll come, we'll take them because they have two other settings here in the district, one on 7th Street and, and another one in Anacostia. So they came and they took some women with their babies and, and went to see those two centers. And they came back in, I did not go because I'd been a number of times. They came back in, they came into our conference room and, and they sat down and I looked at them and I said, well, and they said, now why do you think they said that? They said that because when you go to those other two sites, hanging around outside the building are people who are mentally ill, who are drug addicted, who are homeless, who are derelict, if you want to use that word with them. And they told me that they were afraid for their babies. They would not come to the center if they had to walk through a group like that. 
every time they wanted to come. And one woman put it the best way possible. She said, this place is an oasis for me. Thank you. All of us, I wanna, I wanna thank you for um, for being here today for your presentation, for what you have done, uh, for for the revolution you have created, and for what you are gonna continue to do. Thank you. Let's give her a round of applause.